guys. I am inspired. Ooh. Hey guys, I am inspired to get outside today. It is cold and cloudy and we are expecting snow tonight if you can believe it we've gone from 20 degree weather to cold spring weather but that is so normal for us in march april may even weather so <laughs> is I have a bunch of flowers in my backyard and I have not been able to get out and photograph them yet. <sighs> I think I better do this before they completely die on me because they are early spring flowers. I've got daffodils, I have uh, some hyacinth, they smell incredible and my backyard doesn't look incredible but uh, let's go see. <laughs> never hear me claim to be a really good gardener <laughs> um, I just I I just don't have that talent my mother is incredible her garden is just gorgeous in fact when uh, when all this stuff is over I should go down there and take some photos in her garden because she always has just so much beauty all right so today I have two things <laughs> it's hard to see here's my camera and I have a 50 millimeter lens and I have a 100 millimeter lens. Both are macro and I kind of want to see the difference between the two. So I'm going to get down into this garden and I'm going to check out the difference between these two lenses. I don't really have anything to sit on so I'm just going to let myself get messy in the dirt here. Okay, <laughs> so I have with me my Sony camera. This is a Minolta 50 millimeter macro, and then I have a Sony 100 millimeter macro. The 50 millimeter macro is a, yes, 2.8, and the 100 is also a 2.8. This, I have noticed this before though, that the 50 millimeter macro lens, I can get up close, like say if taking pictures right here, I can get this close with the lens. The 100, unfortunately, I cannot get that close. So I wanna see if there's really a big difference between the two of them and what I can do. We'll find out. Now, I have this bean bag so that I can take pictures directly from the ground. I also have this tiny, tiny little tripod. Now, this tiny tripod, it's a Pytech, PGY Tech, is not strong enough for this camera. So it's actually just gonna help me to be a little more steady in my handheld. So um, that's okay. I'm gonna start with the ISO. I'll probably go to 800 because uh, well, I'll start there anyway, see how it goes. And uh, because I'm going to be somewhat handheld, we'll see how that goes. And the wind, I need to stop the wind. .5 and at ISO 800 it's giving me one five hundredth of a second I'm down 0.5 of an exposure value and uh, that just helps for 
any of the brighter highlights not to get blown out. So that's not bad. I think the depth of field was pretty good. I'm gonna play with it and see which one, uh, what depth of field looks better. So I'm gonna take a few more. I'm gonna take the uh, ISO up to 1250 and see how high I can get. When I'm trying to take like right in, I'm focusing on that middle part of the, uh, the flower, just right in the center there, the yellow. When I'm trying to do that, like really close up, my ISO is insufficient. So I'm going to move it up a bit, try a few more angles and see how that affects it. This is not, this is not easy because, um, well, <laughs> it's just not easy. I'm moving more than I want to and uh, the flowers aren't moving too much, which I'm grateful for, but uh, still they're moving. And I'm going for a flower that's a bit further away. So then I'm taking it right down to F2.8 so that the background is a bit blurry. Now when I do that, my ISO can come right down because I'm getting a really high shutter speed. How that goes okay now the question will be how close can I focus ooh it's not too bad it's better than I remember So I need to be steadier. It's a longer lens and um, I think I'll bump up my ISO again and see what we can get. So now, I'm going to move on and take a few pictures of the hyacinths. And uh, wow, they smell incredible. And I'm just going to see how it goes. Yeah, I've been going from ISO, hold on. So from like ISO 200 to ISO 1250, just based on as the light changes, the, uh, the angle I'm shooting at, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
and the lens that I'm using. So there's that and um, anywhere from f2.8 to f32, which really makes it too difficult actually to get a steady shot. But um, yeah, let's see. Too close. Sometimes it's hard to say what angle to go for. These ones are so, uh, I love the way the petals curl out. And so it's hard to tell uh, whether to go right in front of it or capture just some curves or just get a sideways shot. So I take, you know, about a million of them. <laughs> and right now I'm using the 100 millimeter. I'm gonna switch back to the 50 and uh, make that comparison again. Okay, I have the 50 and I will admit, it is my favorite macro lens. So the 100 has some uh, work to do to move into my uh, realm of favorites. So it seems like I can get just as close with the 50 because of the focusing distance. I'm not sure, I'll check to see what the difference is on my computer, but um, so far I'm not really seeing that maybe it's worth the cost to go from the 50 to the 100 millimeter macro. And it might just be this brand, these particular lenses, I'm not sure, but uh, it is an interesting comparison. <music> Okay, so it's really hard to know sometimes how to focus on these uh, flowers in the garden because even though you're doing a macro, it's really important still to get a good composition. And, um, you know, just because it's a beautiful flower doesn't make it a good composition. So it's hard to know. So I was trying to take images from below, some from above, some from the side, and, um, it's really nice. I've been out here now for a long time and I've just been enjoying this because, you know, we're stuck at home, but that doesn't mean that we can't still get out and and enjoy. So <laughs> uh, I hope that you guys are having a good time. I am going to uh, say that having not yet looked at the images myself. By the time you're watching this video, you're gonna see some of the images that I've taken. But this 100 millimeter macro lens compared to the 50 millimeter macro lens. The 50 is a lot smaller, which is nice because it's easier to handle. The 100 is still not too big, so it's, it's fine. It's an f2.8. Both of them are an f2.8, so it was kind of a somewhat fair comparison. Although one is Sony, one is Minolta. There's not really that much of a difference. Um, the 50, like I said, I can get a lot closer than I can with the 100. And um, the 100 
is it's not bad I can get quite close but I'm gonna when I go on to the computer I want to see if there's a quality difference and how far in I can crop and and all of that stuff but um, my outdoor experience with the two lenses that was that there's not really a huge difference between them and uh, if I had to choose between one or the other right now I'd probably just stick with my 50 even though it's a really old lens from the 90s I really really like it and um, yeah it's just uh, <laughs> it's gorgeous I think I might before they die pick a daffodil and bring it inside for uh, my vase and put it in there so that I have just some spring. I hope that you guys are doing great and uh, that, you know, we'll have a lot more time together as the weather gets better and um, we're allowed to go out and do more things. My ankle is getting better. Thank you so much for all your well wishes. I am actually able to walk around now and, uh, and do some biking and stuff. So I'm very grateful and I hope that you guys are doing well. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.